This is our first Sunday Night nice episode, guys. I, Arthur Perkins, am disrespectful. I'm a disrespectful son of a bitch, okay? Damn straight. Wow, all right, you didn't have to add to that, but all right, there Get we right are. Out there. Welcome to this... Battletech Blades of Honor Season 1, Episode, I think it's 23. I think this is also the last episode of this season. Uh, and yeah, I believe so. Uh, we're we're nearing the end of the year, and I certainly feel like we're hitting a, a sort of climax, cliffhanger sort of deal here. And uh, I think at the end of that, we'll sit down, and perhaps even in this episode, we'll sit down and talk about how we think the season went, any rules changes. And uh, I don't think it'll surprise anybody to hear that, you know, season two is probably going to end the same way season... Was it season one of Battletech? The time of Total Warfare that ended with the clan invasion? Or season two? I think it's season two. I think it might have been two. That's how it's going to end, though, is season two of this show is going to end with the clan invasion. I don't really feel like I'm spoiling anybody to say that as we move into <gasps> year 3047. What? We're, we're a bit close oh, to clan, clan, clan lines than, than Winton, are we? Or we're still, yeah, we're, you're we're two still jumps closer, you're yeah. still, which <laughs> still puts you about 20 jumps away from the clan front lines. Yeah, I mean, in, in the case that you're about 10% closer, yeah. In the way that the 90, you know, 90 yard football line is closer than the opponent's end goal when you're standing at your own ankle. In the same yeah. way that compound bows can shoot farther than non compound bows. Ooh, sorry. We are, I'm confused. We are, Which we're, one we're of us regular... is being disrespectful right we're... now, Rad? Is it you or is it me? <laughs> it's always I me. I think we're it's taking the, turns. It's is uniformly it me. me. <laughs> You let me know how you want to do this this episode. I this, I think you're I've currently you know. covered in a shower of blood. Just to be very I'd, clear. I, 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 I'd also I'd also debate that the 200 pound compound bow can shoot just as far as a 200 pound longbow. It's just one's just much harder to draw. Mm, mm. Tell that to the clans. So you're saying that <laughs> the ease of drawing a bow with a similar amount of power means you could draw a more powerful bow, allowing you to shoot farther. Mm. Or allow you that's, to shoot longer, and uh, that's, that's, th 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 then you could shoot with the same amount of energy invested. Yes, that's yes. modernity for you, right there. Wow, the I modern era, what... which started in what year, Rad? Fourteen forty-six. Fourteen sixty-three would have been close <laughs> enough, but fourteen forty-six, sure. That's pretty fucking close. Okay. <laughs> Somewhere out there, the defenders of yep. Constantinople send their regards because they're not going to need them for another 17 it's, years. That's actually, it's actually it's, it's when the compound bow was invented is when they started like, all right, now we can begin the modern era. <laughs> the audience doesn't have any reference for this. this I don't game. care. Okay. <laughs> I, don't, I, I didn't care yesterday about the audience and I won't care tomorrow about the audience. The audience cares I, about you, man. Did I tell you that right. they wanted to set up a show with... <laughs> It, it was called Constantinople at the time. It literally Emperor Constantinople. In 1443, it was the Byzantine Empire, not the fucking Ottomans. Was that banned? Was it we might be giants? They might be giants. They might be giants, yes. They might be giants. I listened to that band so much when I was in high said, Yeah, you listened yeah. to it because it was on the fucking Warner Brothers cartoon. The ballad of Triangle Man just never ceased triangle to man, entertain me. Man. Um they, they so so they might be giants did a, a collaboration with um uh, uh, who did Tub Thumping? Chumba Wumba. Chumba Wumba. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, where, where, where they might be giants. Yeah, they, they might be giants did Tub Thumping and Chumba Wumba did Istanbul, not Constantinople. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> they, did the, they did the theme song for Malcolm in the Middle as well. Yeah. Well, they James, might be giants. In 1443 and uh, 1463, <laughs> it was still called Constantinople. Yeah. It wasn't renamed Istanbul until after the Seljuk Turks moved in until after it's the atomic the compound bow was invented <laughs> the atomic compound bow <laughs> yeah the nuclear I mean, powered compound the nuclear arrow. compound I, I, I hate bow. to tell you this but compound bows contain atoms <laughs> <laughs> damn it all that research ah, but, for uh, nothing hold on what if it's made of antimatter mm -hmm. oh yes i actually if don't you know if antimatter contains yeah. atoms 
If you if you can produce an antimatter compound bow for me, I will. I if will I could produce antimatter yeah. the size of a compound bow and contain it securely, I would be the richest man in the world. <laughs> yeah, if I run that patent by you, you'd and be more, interested. Is that what you're more, saying? More importantly, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> it happens so rarely, huh, James? All right, let's get to the part where you're covered in blood. My favorite part. So you have just killed Hiroshi Yamamoto, a.k.a. the Enforcer, after your mother killed the boss, a.k.a. the Big Cat, and has seized control of the Shinsen Society, a.k.a. the Shinsen Gumi. Siegfried Arneson. Yep. Your presence at this ceremony was already pretty iffy. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right. Normally, guests aren't allowed to attend these ceremonies, and they're definitely not allowed to attend assassinations of the boss sort of deal, right? So the other members here, Miyako the Serpent, Sakura the Whisperer, and Jiro the Architect, are just looking around like, okay, this is kind of fucked. Like, <laughs> two people have weapons out right now, their mother-daughter pair, you know, like, this is bad. Yeah. Just to be clear, this whole like, scene is playing out in comparison to a montage of Poe and uh, Hero working together on the blackjack, covered in oil. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's raining, man. <laughs> <laughs> playing with the boys. Playing with the boys. You and Poe pass each other doing a high five and then do the low five on the other side. Yeah. Sorry, continue the joke. Okay. Oh, continue the joke? I don't have a joke for you. Instead, I have a really fucking dramatic scene where blood is fountaining. How's that? Is that a joke for you? Yeah, it goes back and forth, right? In one, it's like blood shooting out of the top of like a decapitated body. And then it switches over to two shirtless men like turning wrenches on a on a sorry. piece of plumbing that's shooting like motor oil. I mean, we can... Sorry, we, has we can everyone here seen the film... Humorous. Has everyone here seen the film Boondock Saints? Oh my of course, God, yes. God. Yeah, because there's a scene that one where, where, guy where, with six guns. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a scene that where like their friend is telling the the joke, the the racist joke to the Sicilian crime lord, and he realizes he should probably stop. And the guy's like, "Please continue the joke." That's what it was. So whenever I say whenever I say continue the joke, that's what I mean. Is just continue. Oh, okay. Thanks, James. Yeah. Thank you for Paris. threatening me. Great. <laughs> Perfect. So Siegfried, at this point. Akiyama Genji turns towards you, and she is drinking from a sake bottle that contains her daughter's sake. Sorry, a sake cup that contains her daughter's sake and her former boss's blood. Huh. She puts it back down on the table, pours sake into it, and gestures for you to sit where her daughter was just sitting, but she had to rise to go assassinate someone. And she says, Lord Arneson. I would invite you to join us as a Jun Kosain, as a member of the Shushensa, Shuhensa, which is definitely what I said, a business associate to the Yakuza. My understanding is, is that you wish to open a hotel business that will have games of chance and gambling. Our people control the local police and many of the labor unions. I believe that if you were to ally yourself with us, we would help you get the permits completed. We would help fulfill any work orders, resources. You've already seen what we can do in rebuilding your house and our loan of the houseboat to you. We would be honored to invite you to the edge of our group as a business friend and help speed along your dreams with no interference on our part. Uh, Siegfried walks over to like the edge of the... Uh... I guess to to where he she indicated for him to like sit. Okay. But before before taking a seat, um. By the way, if we want to keep this this in the vein of being humorous, uh, this episode Siegfried is played by the Muppet Pepe the King Prawn. Um, <laughs> what the fuck is happening? The best of all the Muppets, in my personal opinion, <laughs> the Eagle. Right? The Eagle is the best Muppet. No, it's Pepe. It's okay. Pepe. Pepe and the rat. What's the rest? Is Roscoe Rizzo. or something? Rizzo. 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 Yep. Uh, <clears throat> I changed my answer. He... It's the two guys who are Roger Ebert and. Uh... I'll accept that answer oh, yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah the old guys. 
old guys um, in the balcony. I channel them all the time in my life. <laughs> so okay, so Siegfried walks over to reason. where where she's indicated for him to sit, but before sitting, uh, he asks, just asks her, "What would be expected of me?" We would only expect that we could move money through your facility. I think it is of little surprise that a cash business like yours could be used wash money that the government would rather get their hands on. We have no need to interfere in your business. Okay. Um, the buildings around your business, however, may fall into the hands of our business associates. People who can't stay at your hotel may require places where they might find young men and women who they could meet, escort them at your hotel, that sort of thing. I'm, I'm familiar with the type of businesses you're referencing. Yeah, they're talking about setting up a prostitution ring around your hotel. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I was a mercenary liaison. I had to show these guys a good time. Yeah, exactly. You get it. I want to give my uh, mom like a PC glance of don't fuck my friend. She, That's not what I brought him here for. She gives it, you a glance. So you know that this is a official process of the Yakuza. Yeah. The Shu Hensha are are considered like interns, right? They are members of a Yakuza family, like on the most outer orbit, but they are protected by a process known as Kigyo Shatai, which means front company which essentially means if something happens to the front company, something happens to the family and they step in to take care of it. You know what I mean? Dude, like if someone causes yeah. trouble on Siegfried's property, you don't go to the cops, you go to the family and they take care of it, no matter how small it is. So from what I know about this relationship, it's not, um, it's not going to be exploitive. I mean, it will be exploited, artisan. right? They're, yeah. I mean, they're going to wash their money but in his casino. He it's could a, be an it's, enormous But it's a mutual beneficial. Here. Yeah, it's mutually right. beneficial for sure. I mean, they're going to green light everything. They're going to make sure nothing bad happens. But he's getting involved with a criminal element, right? Right, like, right. Well, he's a big boy. He can make that decision for himself. But I just want to make sure, based on what I know, right, like, I, I don't want your him, mom I don't want him to step into a trap. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She has achieved a lifelong dream with a totally psychopathic kill right in front of you. You've been promoted instantly by killing your immediate superior as well. Like, this is her basking in the literal blood of her enemies. Like, oh, yeah. I, I do want to mention, before you make your move here, Neo Buzzard, that things have also changed between Akari and her mom, Akiyama. Because before this moment, you were the head of the house, and she had essentially no power over you. But... While you walk out of the shadows, you're still the head of the house. And while she's your mother, you know, again, you control the fate of the Genji family. However, in the Yakuza, her word is now absolute and unquestionable. Right. When you walk in that. the shadows, she's the boss. And that I think puts I... the two of you in a very tenuous power struggle. I knew that when, I, when she first proposed this, right? Yes. This course of action. I, I was aware that 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 would be a power dynamic that I would have to learn to live with. Yeah. I think, okay, I, uh, I was going to say, I think Siegfried is giving like Akari, a, like a significant PC glance. Um, kind of like, just like looking like if I, can I, is this something I can actually refuse and walk out of here alive? Do I know that Arthur? I mean, he just watched the boss get killed by somebody, right? Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's enormous risk and no benefit to letting him walk away. Like, just just by bringing him here, you've essentially killed him in some aspects. Or at the very least, trapped him into this... And I would situation. point out that your mom might have done this specifically because Siegfried is here, and this will now force him to choose a side. He either works with them or he dies tonight. I was going to say, is she she's sitting at the table, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, if I really want to just fuck everything up, I could just draw my sword and kill her, too. You could. Put, put Akari right back at the top. You're like, now I'm the boss. <laughs> yeah, because... Yeah. Yeah, 
that's how you decide the boss is the person who kills the person <laughs> whoever kills the, the last boss. one wins yes. yep right that's how that's how it works in uh, ancient martial arts and also in crime the other people uh, here at the table will have no say and also will not murder an outsider who just killed their new boss i uh i don't know what kind of pc glance to return other than you know this is Sorry this is where we're, rocking. yeah sorry yeah <laughs> i look at him with with sorrow that like i did not know this was this was not my intent to uh to involve you in this but i you know how much can i say in a pc glance i'm sorry but i'll support whatever you decide yeah. um so i'm, I'm not going to attack the the monks oh, i, was I don't think say, this I, is the Siegfried moment doesn't, you could kill Siegfried her right know, now yeah Siegfried doesn't know enough about what's going on. That that that'd be metagaming and PC knowledge or I don't, player knowledge. I, but... I, you literally just watched a woman kill somebody, and everyone else in the room except for yeah. uh, Kari looks horrified. So, Pretty much, yeah. Siegfried was there to watch. Uh, he was he was there because his friend invited him, and now he realized he had to watch her back. I mean, I think and you're understanding now right now that you're not leaving here alive unless you say yes. I mean, yeah. That's, Not that's, only are you that's taking actually, up the vibe, but you're also He's... getting it directly from Akari. Yeah, uh, I don't. I don't think he kneels because I don't think he knows the protocol. I think he just picks up the sake cup and and drinks it. Okay. So what happens is you drink it, then the two of you exchange glasses at a rotating table, and you drink from the other person's glass. So you okay. get rose. Akari, oh, was, I, was I supposed to leave whiskey or sake yes. in the cup for her to yeah. drink? Oh no, he bottomed up that thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he needed he needed a drink after what I he think... just saw. I think Akiyama turns to look at Akari and just like, you know, like get you to try to refill his glass for him. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll pour more for, I'll pour a little bit more in both. Okay. So just to be clear, you, Siegfried Arneson, are now in the glass that you keep because Akari keeps her glass that she got from her mom. Mm -hmm. uh, from, well, technically from the boss, but from her mom. You are keeping the glass that is murder evidence because it's the one that the boss's blood fell in. That is mm -hmm. now yours, so you are now tied to this murder. <laughs> and you keep that for the rest of your life. Yeah, I'm watching the murder. Yeah, if you ever want to leave the Yakuza, you have to give it back to the boss of bosses. But Siegfried doesn't understand any of this, so I that know, glass is going that glass is going directly in the dishwasher the second he gets home. Incredible. Oh, yeah. That probably is a good plan. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't say you couldn't clean really... it. I'm just saying it's covered in someone's blood. Like when you just drink... really confused, like what's he supposed to do with a dirty cup? When you drink out of it, it's a little sugary and also kind of coppery, actually. <laughs> I really can just see up. him with like <laughs> he's standing. You know, this is like a still shot of like well, panned way back, and he's like standing naked. With in front of a dishwasher with like a barrel of clothes burning like outside the kitchen window. No one can ever know. <laughs> Sterilized. Akiyama Genji says, this is the formation of a new order. No one can know what happened here. Until we have dealt with the local detectives, those who have been sent from the planetary government. No one can know that my daughter is a member, and no one can know that I am the boss. Till we have eliminated this Hirohito Goro, we will call the tattoo artist in to give my daughter her tattoos, and then we will kill that man and cover up his death. For all intents and purposes, the big cat, still the boss of this gang, I am still the head of the headquarters unit, and my daughter is not a member of this Yakuza until all the pieces have fallen into place. I assume everyone here understands what I mean. No can one I says like anything, but you see... Can like, I do a perception check and like read the room? Yeah, like, who are potential problems? All right. Okay. Wisdom on perception. Oh. Uh, can somebody roll a dash for me? I don't have it open. I'm being a slow poke. Yeah, sure. Perception for me. Uh, with wisdom, this is a, it's at a plus one. So you got an eight. That's I rolled eight. a seven. Okay. okay. 
the vibes you're getting around the room are horror, shock, and obedience, right? Like, by acting first and by acting so severely, this woman has locked herself in place. And now it's a question of do these people trust each other enough for one of them or all of them to overthrow her? Because if any of them betray the others to Akiyama, they know that they're dead. Because this woman will literally openly murder them in the middle of a super peaceful ritual where no weapons are supposed to be brought in sort of feel. You know what I mean? It's like a like, Kill Bill, Oren Ishii, like runs across a table and chops that dude's <laughs> head off kind of situation. Yeah. So Miyako, Sakura, Jiro, they're looking at each other. And what you see is people who are trying to weigh each other up and no one has any immediate want to die sort of deal. If they make a determination to take action against you or your mother, it's not happening here in this instant. And certainly working together is off the table until they can start sounding each other out. So I want to, I want to like do the thing that they do in samurai movies where I whip my sword to like splash blood off of it. Right. To like clean it a little bit. And then we hear a uh, reed flute. That's like, Ooh, wah, yeah. wah, wah. <laughs> and as I do that, I assume it draws glances yes. and I want to make poignant co eye contact with each one of them as I sheathe my blade. I think we can do some sort of intimidation type role for sure. Can I, can I assist then. with her intimidation? Absolutely. Let's give you a plus one for Gary guy standing nearby. I think I think if she if I can pick up on the fact that she's trying to intimidate, I go back to that weird blank Brock Samson ready to murder everyone stare. <laughs> I think that you just watch her knock blood off of a sword. I don't know that intimidation is uh, you know, outside be, the realm of possibility here. It'd be intimidation charisma. I don't think intimidation is a skill, so I'll throw persuasion so strength or leadership strength to you. Ooh, I'll take persuasion. Persuasion's my highest thingy. Okay. Uh, strength, I have zero, but I have a plus two persuasion. Plus my aid will be a plus three on this. Okay. Pretty good. I mean, that's an 11 total. An 11. So you do the thing with the sword, and then I assume... And as with all badass samurai stuff, you like casually sheathe the sword. Of sort course, of. And yeah. as we hear the sound of it being slid into the scabbard, and like that last second click as the end of the suba or whatever it's called clicks into place, people will just like suddenly move and they're like, oh shit, <laughs> this is so scary. <laughs> <laughs> like we're hardened gangsters and this motherfucker is out here assassinating people. I mean, like that last little click, you also get like, you know. I, I don't know how big Siegfried is, but I feel like this six four guy like stands up behind, like looms over top me, <laughs> like four foot broad shoulders. Like it's clear that uh, when uh, when the click when the click is audible, like Siegfried's eye twitches. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'm inspired by that. Uh... The new Ghost of Tsushima game, or whatever it's going to be called, where they did all cowboy western style music, but with Japanese traditional instruments, and it's so fucking sick. It's absolutely insanely sick. I haven't heard that. That sounds cool, though. Go watch the trailer. It's called, like, Ghosts of Gote or something like that. Do it right now. No, don't do it okay. right now. We're right playing now. a fucking... <laughs> God damn it, James. See, this Pause is what happens. If you don't entertain James, he runs around and he just causes chaos like this. Continue the joke. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything else either of you want to do with this scene? No, I think it's a good place to... In the morning... To, be, to fade. All three of you receive communications in from... Hold on. Lord Sung Cho. That he is disappointed that you were you did not report to the Baron as soon as you arrived home. And that it would be in your best interest to come to the government center as quickly as possible. Okay. Yeah, I comply. Yeah. 
So in a sort of reverse of the first episode of the show, it's the three of you standing in full samurai outfits with your swords outside <clears throat> of the ceremonial room. And when you're let in, you're not being ushered to a place of honor like you were in the first episode. Instead, you are made to kneel very far away from the other clan leaders around a extremely upset Koji Nosagi who's doing his best to show no emotion, but he's doing it in that way that makes him look constipated. Standing next to him is Lord Cho of Clan Sung. Also present is Lady Iwasaki of Clan Sakura. There is no representative from Clan Takeda, because if you recall, they haven't picked a new leader yet. And it looks like uh, Lord Yasuke of Clan Sakamoto is not here, and said there is a new, younger representative here who you don't recognize. And the samurai Red Hime is also present. Pretty much everybody that isn't Koji Nosagi is not looking at you. In the back of the room, behind his father's throne, almost, um, is it, is Varys the one, the eunuch from Game of Thrones? Very like, sure. Yes. The Master Liter of Whispers? <laughs> yeah. Literally, like a spider hanging beside his father's throne is, and it, it, in the shadows is, uh, already forgotten this guy I'm here Shiro Nosaki the son the Hermes pilot who you've recently met and he is not like he's outside of the lighting he's it doesn't look like he's present in a sort of formal way he's just hanging out listening to what's happening after like a full minute of silence where nobody moves <laughs> The Baron, the Shugo Koji Nosagi, in I I know that we've all been speaking, you know, English throughout this. Just a reminder, everyone is actually speaking Japanese the majority of the time, in like really rough Japanese that has the connotation of like speaking down to people. Koji Nosagi says, "It is my understanding that samurai." who are part of my honor guard, the Blades of Honor, have gone to another world without my permission and have interfered in the local politics. They have murdered citizens of the Davians without permission. They have presented no remorse for their actions and, in fact, hope to be celebrated, lauded, and given medals. Is this true? What would be appropriate at this point? Like, I don't know just a straightforward any, answer. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's this is a is bad, an actual answer expected. I don't think an actual answer is expected. You know what I mean? Like, this would be okay. if you wanted to act like a smartass, you could say something. But no, I feel like I probably just um, so like I want to take responsibility for the specific things he's addressing. Yes, right. So I. Uh, so this know, is like... Whittington, right? This is not not. Um, yes, he's talking where... about what happened on Whittington with the right. setting fire yeah. and assassination. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just do the you know I do the thing that's feudal Japanese lords did, I guess, and I just you know press my forehead to the floor okay. like in deference. You yeah. know, like I I understand that I fucked up and I accept responsibility. Lord Cho says, "My lord, these three have served you well in the past." They are young, inexperienced. Perhaps it would be best to punish them lightly for their transgressions. It is my understanding that Akari Genji was responsible for the burnings and the killings. Perhaps the punishment should lay solely on her. Now at this point, this is not the Lord's this is not the Baron speaking. This is Lord Chung So Cho Cho Sung Cho, who you guys have all met and talked to before, he's kind of tried to help you out. At yeah, his it's some, my, some, of my, some of my protege at the start, I think. Yeah, to some extent. Not, not my protege, sorry, my my patron or such. Yes, you know. I mean he tried to fill you in on what was going on and how your your parents' mech had been stolen from you, um, but without like directly implicating anybody. He is giving you an avenue, like. 
the social distance between the two of you, it would be appropriate for you to respond to him in a way it would not be appropriate to respond to the Baron directly. Okay. Um, I'll, you know, I lift up a little bit, but I'm still like in a bow as I speak. And I'll say, um, it's true. There are some I, gas, like, <gasps> shock. I, I, I overstepped and pursued a matter of family honor without your guidance and permission. And I understand, I accept responsibility and I understand the mistake that I have made. And I accept whatever consequences you feel are appropriate. The Baron and, and then my Lord head goes son. back to the floor. Two of them exchange a glance. The Baron says nothing, and Lord Sung says, You claim that this was a family matter. Um, it's no secret that my father was spurned from his original ancestral home um, by his brother. And when I accepted the responsibility of being head of my house, I decided I felt that that was not acceptable um, without reprisals. So I acted on my own behalf to address the slight on my family's honor. Your father did not ask you to do this. This was a decision I made as the head, as the head of my house. My father is displeased with my actions and I will be seeking his forgiveness and counsel as soon as I can. Lord Sung leans in to the Baron and the two of them have a very quiet conversation. The Baron stands up and says, Your punishment shall be Kesho. Your family's arms industry will be seized. I just press my face back down to the ground. I don't. In the future, I, I expect better from those who serve as my blades of honor. You are all dismissed, and he makes a really, like, dramatic hand gesture before sitting back down. Now it's clear that he's only dismissing the three of you, and like real government business is about yeah. to happen. So this dismissal is like double bad because it means that you aren't involved in court business. <laughs> I don't think I really care court, about court business at this particular juncture. The other two might, but I'm like, ah, good. I'm glad to be leaving. I get up and shuffle that. Yep. Okay. Do you... that thing where I, where I don't turn my back to him until I'm out of the room. Good, 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 good. I'm glad. I assume you all do that, but I'm glad that someone yeah. reminds the audience about it. <laughs> As you exit the room, you go from this perfectly soundproof, like quiet, you know, no one is daring to breathe, and as you exit the room and close the door behind you, you re-enter the government hall where it's all like fax machines and people shouting at each other and cubicles and running around. You hear someone just like, number 37, step up to the desk, please. Number 37. As you re-enter the regular drink? government hall. <laughs> you want some more? I need a drink. All right, let's go get a drink. So what is this, out of character, what does this mean that he sees the family business? So is that he... arms industry that you've worked so hard to build up and uh -huh. like, I, I'm not completely certain how I'm going to run it, but probably the next time we do your like end of year purchasing and, and things like mm -hmm. that, you're going to be at a pretty severe penalty. He's kind of like frozen a bunch of my assets, basically, I right? Mean, like, no, he's directly like taking control of your family's arm industry. Like this, this is a incredibly bad punishment. Like the way that your family makes money, he's seizing it from you so that you'll be weaker, making it more difficult for you to act without his permission. I mean, that makes sense. It's literally, like... it's it's not just like backhanding you and teaching you a lesson. It's also directly impacting your your house's finances. And it's making you weaker as a message to everybody else that, like, if you disobey me, you will become weak and I'll become even stronger. Is this... Obviously, it's, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. There you go. 
All right, this is obviously the legitimate side of the Genji family business. Yes, this what is impact, the legitimate side of the business. What, so, what impact, if any, does it have on the illegitimate side? I mean, the Yakuza get guns from somewhere. It's probably not from the Genji house. You know, you don't get high on your own supply. Plus, the Genji makes good guns, things and it. all you need is a pistol to be a gangster. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> So it's not something I should expect to have returned if I do like well. It could happen. It could happen. Okay. So that's on the table. Perhaps. I mean, if you get discovered as being a Yakuza, probably it'll never be returned. Right. But Or if I collude with his son to have him killed and make a better deal with him, then I'll, you know. I mean, this almost certainly, you know, colluding with his son will probably put you in a much better position. Yeah. I think that's... Unless he screws you over. I gotta talk to mom first. She's my boss, so I gotta get. I gotta tell her Is the situation. She? I like how I you mean, snapped into that, but it's, it's a direction. Uh, my other course of action is to go find dad, uh, reconcile with dad, and get him to speak on my behalf to the baron because my baron, the baron, seems to have at least some measure of a high regard for my father. I want to say that I think this point right here is a good place to end the season and start discussing how we felt about the entire season, any rules changes we want to make, and then talk about goals for season two, because it feels like the three of you going and getting that drink is like a pretty good, you know, credit roll, eat shawarma, sort of. I'm cool with that. God, that scene was so many years ago. <laughs> it was amazing though Incredible. Ashley Johnson was in that movie she I think was. It was, wasn't was that the first post credit scene that was like all the way at the end of the credits not just yes I after believe the, that's uh, yeah, after was the, it I, I, I don't think I, I don't think I saw it in the cinema the, the shawarma scenes I, I think, I, was I, think so it was, used I think it's to... the opposite I think it happened after like the first set of credits and then before the like it was a mid credits yeah I think that's what it was right no, because because the, the big the big credit scene in um, Avengers was Thanos picking up the oh, the Infinity yes, Gauntlet, yes, saying, "I'll right. do it myself." You're That's right, right. And, and, and that and that was the point. That uh, I oh, that, yeah, yeah, that was like I, yeah. you'd be courting death, my lord. <laughs> and they completely forgot that death, Thanos wanting to date death storyline that just completely <laughs> dropped off the map. Just as a note, in the Marvel universe, death is a hot skeleton lady. Yep. Yeah. Doesn't she like in love with Deadpool? I don't know. I don't I really read Deadpool. Around. Could be in the real universe too, we don't know. Yes, because be. Deadpool is real. No, no, no I'm, talking, I'm talking I'm talking about death. Mm. It's true. You believe that death in real life is a real concept conceptual being that also is a hot skeleton lady. I'm just saying I haven't seen any proof of the contrary. Or a parrot. I saw a movie where death was a parrot. And, and it kills Julia as, Dreyfus's daughter, so it could be that too. As many people will tell you, the absence of proof against something is inherently proof for it. What a modern I, idea. Uh, yeah, AP, AP's, AP's blood pressure is slowly... <laughs> He's <laughs> going down. over there. Going down. <laughs> Keeping it under control. <laughs> You're all are, a test uh, sent by death to drive me closer to it. And instead, I choose life. Just so the audience is aware, before the uh, before we started recording, we all came in kind of hot. Yeah. Before yeah, we started recording, <laughs> how yeah. about during? I mean, we started before. How about we started every recording. fucking second? How about Rad going? I don't like running while wearing a U.S. Army T-shirt. <laughs> Life is full of hypocrisy. Hypocrisy is the name of my first rap album. <laughs> that was my nickname in high school. I'm good. I've I've had I've had a good time so far. Um, I don't know what kind of rule changes, I and mean, we've already talked about some stuff like the end of year stuff that might change a little bit. Um, but we've only done that once, so. I at this point I'm, I have a hard time remembering even what we well, talked it's been, about. It's technically been done twice now. This year's end of year stuff was the poker game with Hondo. Oh, that's right, that's right. Mm -hmm. That was the second year's. Okay. It has, so it's changed greatly. 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, and that I, was so I, significant. I didn't even know it happened. I, I, I preferred the poker game with Pondo than than the. Uh, uh, the, the the bad rolling we did the previous <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, of course, of course. yeah I understand I understand any well, you particular have to, you reason have to roll why great to stay the same um I, no, you good well I think just like in general I think personally at my my proclivities as a player is that g- growth and advancement is like a big draw for me and I um. I struggle with that in this game because it doesn't like for our first end of year, you know, it was very hard to progress. And I know that that's a, that is a product of the system that was converted for this, this campaign. Um, and it's meant to be that way. And I know like in oath of into sale, for example, um, or I think it's an oath where you kind of designed it in a way to like, this is, you know, the, the technology is meant to be in decline and you're meant to be more likely for it to break down than you are to like improve your situation. And that's a little bit of a hard pill for me to swallow just the way I like to play games. Um, and then complimenting that the, there's not a lot of house progression. Um, there's also not like the character progression I find to be uh, super bare bones, I guess. Like we're getting XP and we're level. I'm level four now, um, but the system. I don't know. I've not been a stars without number fan, um, at least not in the iteration that we're playing it. I don't, because it really is just skill points. For all practical purposes, all it is is skill points. There's no, you know, and a re- and a reroll, I guess, that I get like once an hour. Those are the, there's no little like fiddly bits that are fun to play with and manipulate, and you know, I hate to use the the much maligned term of min max, but there's no like, there's very little mechanical development from level to level as your character progresses. Like, you know, the best I can do is have a plus two instead of a minus one and like that is the range at after a year of play or however long we've been doing this campaign right and that doesn't i don't hate it but it doesn't feel particularly fun to me either you know what i mean so that's kind of my only i guess gripe is progression is very slow i don't think that's anyone's fault I think that's the nature of not meeting super regularly and um, we do, we play a very role play heavy game. It's not that like, even if I had a bunch of like D and D style things that I could do in combat, we don't spend a lot of time in combat. So I don't know that it would even matter. You know what I mean? Like, uh, so I don't know. I'm rambling at this point, but that's kind of like, that's the only thing that I bump up against I think is, kind of meaningful notable mechanical character progression okay i agree that starts without numbers doesn't do that character progression part in in the way you're talking about but my alternatives were any of the battle tech systems which i think are equally bad at everything you're talking about i agree also being more complicated There yes. was a proposal someone made recently to convert Oath of Venosteel over to Pendragon. We could. It's wild, but we could convert this show over to the Pendragon system. I don't know anything about that. I know. I don't think you'd like it either. Okay. <laughs> you you would not like the part where you can lose control of your character and the GM plays the character for you. I think that would drive you insane. But I'm throwing yeah, it out there as a possible option. I've never go ahead. Go ahead. played a game like that before, so I wouldn't know, but I'm willing to try anything once. I don't so, think you'd like it. <laughs> go ahead, James. Here's my thought. And, and uh, this, 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 I've literally just come up with this thought now, so I'm I'm sort of working it as I go through That's it. That's how all my thoughts work. I just say them as soon as they <laughs> come into my head. Yeah, but this isn't something I've been playing to say. So um, what this... What, it's the same thing, but this, but this game and Oath of an Steel like Pendragon, they are designed to be generational games, you know, like, and I, I know the concept of Pendragon is, is one session, one year. And obviously we do a lot more um, sessions to a year as such, but I don't, uh, well, hold on. 
I know that that has been said that Pendragon's that way, but I don't think it really is. I, of course, some years are that way, yeah. but I don't think every year is supposed to be that. Way. Anyway, yeah. please continue. Um, that I, I agree with what Rad said here, which is that the um, that the amount of progression is uh, in scope quite limited to the amount of passage of time, to the amount of activity going on as such. Uh, and I was going to say, is it worth looking at... So Pendragon's one example, but there are other generational RPGs out there. There's the Chronicle system, which is what was used in um, uh, Song of Ice and Fire roleplay. Yeah, for some there's, reason I knew you were going to suggest that. There's Legacy from Powered by the Apocalypse. There's Free from the Yoke. Um, like, if we if we are taking a short season break and, you know, and we, we are saying, hey, the system is part of the issue... Um, I actually wasn't intending to take a seasonal break, although it sounds yeah. like maybe we might need to if we're changing up mechanics. In defense of not having a lot of house progression, I do want to say when we came into this, I literally said we're not going to, you're going to be lower ranked than the Oath of Endosil guys and like actual house like politics and like world politics are an entire level above you and you're going to be at a local level. I yeah. hadn't realized that house progression was going to be important to you, so I basically didn't include any mechanics for that. I think I think part of the problem there was the fact that, like, and it's only from my own experience, because I didn't make a character that had bureaucracy or high intelligence example, that I pretty much worked out that I'm starting from a point every year of my house is going to go backwards, and the best I can achieve is maintain the status quo um you know i I'll, I'll never be able to sort of get in the head just with with the poor dice i've got unless as a warrior archetype I, I spend about three levels of advancement only into bureaucracy um and and develop no other skills that's rough um yeah which which i mean and, and uh but that that's probably Sounds like that's you have probably, to marry somebody who's got a lot of money or a good financial it, sense yeah it, 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 i'd say it is realistic and it is it is an accurate <laughs> thing um but it comes bring down realism to, to battle tech uh yeah but but, but it, I, look, there's, there's always gonna be a balance of realism and fun so and the difference is that so the reason i don't have those good skills is because i put skills towards things like uh like combat and leadership skills uh which we we've used um, but I mean, if look at, so you said we're 25 sessions in and we've had 23, I think 20, 23. Okay. And we've had two sessions of mech combat and one session of, I have tried to combat. offer you mech combat repeatedly. It's just yeah, that that's true, yeah. Yeah. Rad <laughs> keeps turning the duels down. Yeah. I'll tell you what, we could start the next episode with mech combat. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Honestly, just, I think that I want to see what the Oath of Endersteel guys do as a response before I say what's going to happen in season three. But yeah. I think that could, I think mech combat could be on the table. But on the other hand, I also feel like things are going to be pretty calm until the clan invasion kicks off. I, I wrote down when I started doing this show that we were going to do some clan invasion stuff and then. Neil Buzzard came to me and was like, you know what? We should probably do the Battle of Luthien. And I'm like, so here's my 20-part plan about the Battle of Luthien. And now Neil Buzzard is going to take credit for that, even though I already <laughs> wrote out where they're going to fight, how they're going to fit into the major storyline, how I can include all the major story beats straight out of the book. And he's going to take credit for that. Yeah, we're probably going to do the Battle of Luthien, but that's real season two ending or season three kind of stuff. I don't know that we're going to see a lot of huge mech battles if I can't induce you people to fight in mechs in duels, because, you know, unless you is... have kicked off a war successfully, fighting yeah. other people on your planet is going to be how you fight. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, as far as the system goes, I think the only my only hiccup with the system is skill progression, because like James said, as a warrior, I got to dump like three levels of, of of skill progression to to get better at any one thing. Um, but I think as far as the story is concerned, I I like where the story is going. Um, I think with the clan invasion happening, uh, like Rad couldn't have picked a better time to start beef 
with the Davians because <laughs> everyone is about to be about to be defending from uh, like super soldiers from beyond the stars. So uh, I don't think we'll we'll see an immediate reprisal. Uh, I mean, I guess that also kind of depends on Hold what on. the You're the talking Atlantis about Eric here. Yeah. <laughs> I've never seen a more vengeful man and I've looked at myself in the mirror, so uh so I think I think it'll be interesting to see where the next season for us goes and where the next season for uh uh for the Oath Ando Steel Cast goes. I mean my potential pitch is that season two is uh kicks off with some underworld battles. Like specifically battles I mean potentially mech battles defending your hotel from like Vandals and Yakuza forces trying to burn it down to attack the other Yakuza, like foreign Yakuza from across the planet trying to take you and your Yakuza group out to cut down on Akiyama Genji's power. And the fallout from, you know, the Baron being like, so I heard you were fighting criminals. Why are they attacking your hotel? That's so weird. I uh, I just I, I I do I do want that's on my storyboard is you guys yeah. fight criminals season two. I haven't I haven't found a way to work it into the story yet, but I do want part of my hotel like resort thing to be to offer the samurai experience where people can come in and like wear like LARP samurai armor and learn like horsemanship and my mom how is to, out like... right now literally <laughs> doing that in Japan. Her flight landed a couple hours ago. <laughs> And there are places where they you can go up and like dress up like a gensha or sorry a, a geisha or like go dress up like a samurai yeah. in Kyoto and shit like that. So like the idea of this like of like the the yakuza wanting to come and set up like uh, like a makeshift or like other buildings and stuff to operate like I want to incorporate that into the resort and and like oh interesting have like a like a feudal Japan like. Cool. Almost like a like a feudal like town set up behind the what resort where you can in, uh, West you can like walk around yeah something like that samurai world so yeah, this yeah, is yeah. a this is a real concept I think it's called Mizu Shobai the water world it's um it's a recognition that like criminal elements will set up in places of business where people are not paid a fixed salary mm -hmm. and I know that sounds strange to you but if you think if you know a bit about Japan, you know, they're really obsessed with something called salarymen, which are people that get paid a fixed amount every year, mm -hmm. right? And the majority of people have that kind of job, but waitresses or prostitutes, people who work on commission and that sort of thing, all belong to a world called the Mizu Shobai, and the Yakuza are kind of the arbiters of that world rather than the government. There's real mm -hmm. Yakuza terminology I'm mixing into battle. And by the way, mm -hmm. The, the strange thing about this game is that we're using Battletech's canon Yakuza while I'm also using real Yakuza terminology, and Battletech's understanding of the Yakuza comes out of the 1980s, which may not strictly be accurate. I'm trying to be accurate to Battletech's understanding of the Yakuza while also recognizing that they've changed in the last 40 years. Yeah, they, 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 they got their knowledge of the Yakuza by watching things like American Kickboxer 1, 2, and 3. Yeah. Mm. I got my knowledge of the Yakuza by asking the Yakuza. <laughs> <laughs> There's also been a shit ton of those Yakuza video games and a ton of rats who've all ratted each other out, so. Netflix documentaries. Right. I mean, they say that there's but over I mean... 87,000 Yakuza members right now, which is crazy when you consider that La Cosa Nostra only has 4,000 people in it. Right. But I mean, imagine going to like, I don't know, something akin to like a, like a Renaissance festival or whatever, where there's yeah. like a, like a thieves guild operating out in the open and you think they're all actors, but turn around, they're, all, they're all actual thieves, <laughs> right? Right. It's where it, it'd be like literally offering the Yakuza a place where they can, they can operate in the open and no one's going to bat an eye because they think it's part of the show. Okay. I like this. Uh, I would like to hear from Rad and James about my pitch that season two, if it doesn't open with the vengeance of Vulgaris, opens with battles <laughs> against other Yakuza coming in and how you deal with the fallout of increasingly being entangled in crit criminal elements. And I think maybe your task with the elimination of Detective Hirohito Goro, who, you know, 
isn't on the payroll. You may recall that several times I've mentioned that his office is like quarantined off from the rest of the police. Mm -hmm. It's because he doesn't trust them because they've all been bought out by the local Yakuza. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, he's trying to hunt the bad guys and Akari has now activated the flag. Mm -hmm. I do feel like that. I do. I feel like that. uh... Uh, I forget the rat's mom's character's name. Akiyama Genji. Yeah, I feel like I feel like her getting Siegfried to like somehow be part of the Yakuza is like some some long game she finally was able to to get into place. Yeah, it's my long game. I was trying to yeah. get you into that place for a while because Rad was like, "Wow, it'd be really cool if I could screw over." Siegfried and get him to join the Yakuza, and I was like, "Challenge accepted." How do I do this? And then. You were like, I bring him with you. And I was like, how can I make this work for me? Yeah. Well, I figured it was long game because uh, he was originally supposed to be like arranged marriage Marriage. to like her cousin. Yeah. And so I figured the cousin was going to try to pull me in, but then she died. I don't know how well we portrayed that, but I do think that's a super interesting story that like when Akari and um Arnson meet right it's like how can i take advantage of this guy and then over the course of the story they become like genuine friends and she no longer wants to take advantage of him and now she's but then, like the tragic <laughs> end is like through friendship she puts him in a situation where he will be taken advantage of right like perfect and it, I'll, like, be, I'll, I'll be it honest comes siegfried's, full circle. siegfried's mentality is he really just doesn't care um because as far as he's concerned, he's a soldier, he follows orders, and that's kind of where he's where he's at mentally. And the only the only real personality trait he feels he has outside of like following orders is like the friendships he's made. <laughs> so like you guys you guys see more of Siegfried uh acting the way like Siegfried would actually act as opposed to like anybody else <laughs> than any I'm other glad situ- to hear you situation. Say that. Because I'm I'm inclined to apologize to the group on the whole, because I feel like this whole Yakuza storyline that I've embarked on has uh, disproportionately pulled the story in a direction, and I I don't ever want to put Andrew in a place where his character is not heading a direction. Like, or I don't want to corner you creatively into a position that you didn't want to be in. And also, I feel like with James, I feel like now I've got you doing criminal shit with him. I don't want to put James on the outside like with it, and him feel like his character doesn't have enough to do or isn't involved enough in the same or like i mean i literally like, feel like the only thing james got to do today was shit on me make a few <laughs> volleyball references and then specifically do nothing at a meeting where he was being punished and that's what i'm apologizing for uh, i don't want to put my fellow players I mean, in a situation for where, me as well where but... they're not getting to like play you know the game that they they want to play as well so I actually, so I think, I'm, I'm very self-conscious I, of that. I, I think from my perspective, like the sort of what I established earlier on, just ba- and this is based on a role that was made early on, as far as I'm concerned, Hero's attitude towards Akari's Yakuza involvement is that he appreciates that there is a part of the combine that requires these sorts of organizations to function, but that they, they function in, in the dark. And so therefore he doesn't want to be a part of it. He doesn't want to to know about it he just wants he just accepts that it's there basically so he's not he's not out to stop it he's just simply he doesn't want to be a part of it and i think it worked out well that i then didn't go with you to the to the party and get entangled up in this now what that means going forward especially if what you want to have is the next season which is about the repercussions of that is i, I guess the, the preference for me would be how that's portrayed is um hero is never sort of read into what's going on it's simply a case of you know, if, if you say to him, hey, we, we, to these, today we're fighting these guys, he'd be like, okay, I don't want to know why, but if you tell me we're fighting these guys, we're fighting these guys today. Um, you know, if you're under attack, I don't care who's attacking you, I'll come and come and work to defend you because that's what we do. But he doesn't want to be read into the situation in, in its reality. He simply accepts that it, it, it's happening for a reason and he, he, he's not privy to it, nor, nor does he want to be. Uh, that's, a very, that's a that's a very professional soldier yeah. attitude, right? Like, because <laughs> he has his own fair share of like clandestine shit that he gets up to, 
that he doesn't tell us about because it's like yeah. it's that's not our role to be involved in that part of what he does mm -hmm. and like to be so accepting of like yeah they're involved in shit that i'm not a part of and i'm cool with that like that is that is like that's a different level of clearance and i'm not i'm not a part of it so i'm not interested yeah. in it right well, very my, compartmentalized my, my, if, if, if i had to be involved my lord would let me know right yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i think i think you guys kind of touched on uh i want to say this is this is where i i put in that like reconcile the difference between being a soldier and a samurai is that like siegfried has been a soldier for so long i think it's the only thing he knows how to do well but he he's at a point where he sees both of you as genuine friends but he's learned enough about both of your characters that he knows there's stuff you guys are doing or are involved in that you're not telling him and the only thing he really has to offer is the fact that he is a soldier so he can be a soldier for either of you when you need it and i think that's like we we had the reveal where uh uh we find out hero is has some kind of tie to the isf and i'm like well you you have something you need done point me at it i'll go beat it up and then the same with with akari just now it's you know she she asked me to come along and i'm you know, Siegfried just being the the big dumb goof that he is, will absolutely tag along because he was asked to come along. But the second he realizes, like, oh, I'm needed for violence, it's <laughs> it's time to like lock in. <laughs> yeah. Throws his throws his coat in the corner and is like, all right, well, <laughs> let's do the the Henry Cavill arm clock, uh, arm clock. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Get down to business. I just want I want to just check in and make sure I'm not being a bad teammate. In... Actually, actually, Red, I had, for the past couple of weeks, I had had this issue where I was, like, really trying to reconcile how Siegfried was going to move forward with this whole, like, he doesn't have an heir thing. And I, I was going back and forth between, like, I think he's oblivious and romantic enough that he wants to find someone he can actually have a true romantic relationship with. But then the pragmatic soldier side is like, he just needs someone who's willing to have kids with him. And I, I think if he struck out at the party, he was just going to ask if you wanted to go ahead and get hitched and start having kids to, just to propagate both of our family lines. Um, but yeah, it's, I, it's, it's, it's the, 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 the gay, the gay friend pact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so if we're not married by the but, time we hit 30. Right. But think of all the, think I, of all the tax breaks. When I had that thought, I realized that the two of them would never have any kind of actual romantic relationship. It's just that they're friendly and they, it was a deal to have kids and that him and Akari would have the same relationship. Uh, Akari's mom and dad had. Mm -hmm. Wow. Poetic. We could make yeah. this happen. The shippers would go wild <laughs> with all the non shipping that was happening. <laughs> right. They tolerate each other. It's incredible. <laughs> That's but, uh, that, I'm willing also, to entertain that for sure. I, I was going to say that also kind of went alongside because Siegfried, I feel like he knew starting a casino, he was going to have to have some, some involvement with the Yakuza. And I think uh, early on, I was really struggling with how to have like how to protect the, like the business from, from the Yakuza. And so this, this actually kind of solves that for him. Yeah. Because he, he knew he needed some kind of, like, he either needed some way to keep them out or keep them, get them involved without taking over the business. And if he's just allowing them to launder money through the, like, launder money through it, and it's going to keep the casino essentially safe, then I think it's, it, for him, it's kind of like, a, all right, well, this works. Yeah. It's definitely like, you know, it's all everything that you do with them is going to be a double-edged sword, but right. it's, uh, you know, I put you in a situation where it was either be cut by it or hold it, like, you know, right. so. I, I do think that there's like a, during our, like, while we're having this this talk as cast members and the credits are rolling and we see the, the, the characters drinking at a bar, there's, there's a moment where Siegfried, like, turns to, to Akari and says like like I need you to watch out for my business from from your end yeah right. oh for sure for sure Just... right like whatever influence she can have mm -hmm. in your favor she'll definitely employ right. I think um yeah I don't know I 
I waffled a lot with this character. Didn't really know, you know, I was bounced on the edge of the knife. Hadn't really decided which way to fall. Now that she's fallen a direction, I feel like it's, uh, the best thing to do is just lean in it as hard as I can. You know, I never really found a good way to tap into like her kind of more religious priestly, uh, side. That is completely I'm, fucked. I'm, You've never talked to, uh, no. uh yeah. oh, Inari. <laughs> Except I am to sad about that. Your mech one time. <laughs> I think, you know, maybe I could leverage this, like getting the tattoos and going like all in on this life as kind of like a life changing religious experience. And maybe I can try and pick that part of the character up. Um, Interesting. You know, but I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking about that. I don't want it to feel forced though, or seem forced, but that was originally like, she was supposed to be kind of a dark paladin type like character, right? This which is uh you know, where the the Lord of Hell that was a secretly a good guy and was trying to, you know, f funnel off the people Street that justice. don't belong in hell. Yeah. yeah, to send them away and then punish the people who deserve to be in hell kind of situation. So I mean I feel like we can definitely work that into season two. Um I've kind of been struggling on other storylines, but it just occurred to me that I've been having a lot of trouble getting James into things, and maybe the way to do it is just have his ISF handlers just activate him constantly to, like, get him involved in duels and the Yakuza, like, claim. Not like, I need you to figure out what's going on with the card of Genji, but, like, there's Yakuza activity report back to us on what's going on there, like, kind of open-ended orders, but for them to get involved a lot more so that James I has like a more active role. I like that a lot. I like the the concept of challenging like the di the dichotomy, the balance of two shadow organizations and like what their relationship is with each other. Sometimes it's probably adv adversarial, sometimes it's probably complementary like it's all two, you know, two CIAs, right? The KGB and the CIA trying to or like the NSA and the CIA or the FBI right. and the CIA or the so NRO I, I think... and the CIA and the I'd definitely be interested to hear what James has, is, how he feels about that. But I yeah, think man, that's so, a good so angle. Some things like, for example, I think that um, Hero would not be on board with the idea of trying to kill the detective Hirohito. And if that if that was something that looked like was going to happen, he would probably, without any other sort, form of instruction, he would probably try to, to warn him or move him before it could happen sort of thing. Um, it's time and, for yeah. Hari to go solo. <laughs> See, I was uh, thinking the same thing. I was thinking she might try to warn him too, like try to give him an opportunity <laughs> to like scram. I love the idea of both of you showing up to warn him and all you find is just this huge Viking guy holding his head above. <laughs> <laughs> I got him. Don't worry, guys. I actually, I actually had this idea of uh, before Matsuri died, if he like, if he like arrested Matsuri after after they got married, he would like drag this guy into the street and beat him silly in the street as, <laughs> as just an example of like, don't touch my family. You don't arrest a noble's <laughs> wives, you idiot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's this guy's we, we, job, we, though. <laughs> regarding the ISF thing, we saw this though with the Ark on the other planet where there was like the, you know, the, there was what the locals wanted and there was what the ISF wanted, which were, which were different in terms of what would happen with the people. And we had to sort of reconcile those two things together. I mean, you did a fucking fantastic job screwing everybody, James. It was really a pleasure to watch. <laughs> you were like, so, planetary representative, have you considered that you could seize control of the company if this guy was dead? And I was like, what is happening? <laughs> fucking worm tongue over here. Jesus, um, <laughs> yeah. So, like, I, I've got no, I've got no problem with, with you know, using the ISF to activate Hero more or such. Like I said, I, 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 I had no concern about having little to do in today's session because um, the only, I mean, the, there wasn't a good chance to jump in and say it, but potentially in the meeting where um, Akari was was chastised before, between when she spoke to. Um, uh, she not to show. Yeah, to yeah, show. Yeah, oh, to show. Um, okay. To show, but but between her speaking to him and him speaking to the Baron, I was looking for an opening there to for Hero to basically say, "Well, look, you know, even though I wasn't aware of this, it happened on like like that we, we were off planet on my mission to recover the sword, and so I'll take responsibility for that." You know, um, that's okay because what he said but, was, yeah. 
I lay the full responsibility at the feet of Akari Genji, and she went, yup, it's my responsibility. Yeah. <laughs> I love the idea that you're like, I can jump in front of this bullet, and everybody's like, no, the bullet, we know where the bullet's going, yeah. we got it. <laughs> I was trying to figure out if there was a way Siegfried could, uh, could take the blame, because he's already, like, ostracized on planet, so I mean... Well, the the big Viking guy walking around in the middle of uh of the samurai culture gets gets even more disliked. But just because the planet is racist doesn't mean that this guy's racist. Your boss it has was... actually been kind of cool with you guys. It was more a case of thinking that, that like if three people share the blame, each person is punished. It could less. be less. Yeah. 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 That taking would the blame was happened. a little You would have all suffered bad punishment. Yeah. Just to be clear, <laughs> that's the taking culture the... we're living in. Taking the blame was a little tactical because the sun was there. And I knew that if the sun saw me get harshly punished by the father, the sun could, would be like, okay, now she'll be easier to like get on my team. Right. Cause now she's got like, now she's got beef and, and he would think that's, he could use that to his advantage a little bit maybe. So that was, that was in my head a little bit when I was like, Akari wants to, in front of the son, she wants to have a little bit of a bad relationship with the father because she okay. wants to be able to leverage that as a relationship with the son. Okay. Whether it be romantic relationship or at this point, she'd settle for even just business relationship, right? Like an alliance. Oh, you know what she should do? She should get she should get a some kind of recording of him uh talking about how he wants to overthrow his dad and then get the uh, the police officer involved. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That'd be wild. This is Breaking Bad level of just too many fucking people all fucking each other over at the same yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just need to start having ditty parties where I just get just this video footage of everybody doing bad stuff and doing, blackmail man? them all. <laughs> well, this video got demonetized for sure. <laughs> Jesus. Hey, it wasn't my fault for once. Yeah, that's yeah. true. You're so happy about that, I could tell. We find out Akari's yacht has like 500 gallons of baby oil on it. Yeah. What the fuck, guys? Come on. <laughs> Work with me here slightly, okay? We are slightly, me. but only slightly. And also working against me at the same time. <laughs> A lot more than slightly. Yeah. I don't know. I'm pretty happy with the way things are going. I think, yeah, I don't know. Am I the only one that's like, I wish there was a little bit more going on mechanically in this game? Because if if I'm the only one, then, you know, I'm not having a terrible time. We can keep it the way it is. There's no changes needed. No. I'm definitely enjoying myself. It's uh, whenever we're able to schedule a, like, schedule a game for a week, I, it's definitely something I'm looking forward to every, oh, same. Same, you know, every week. I hate this show. <laughs> it sounds right. <laughs> that's given time. That's how you feel about every show I've ever been on. That's They've not all true. been your least that's favorite shows. That's not even. I've never said that about any of the shows you've been. You on. can't even watch the last episode of a time on Total War. You hated the way that show ended. I did hate the way it ended, but that's because my best friend Sid Alpha fucking left the show, and it became a disaster from then on. It was really tough. Been. I wanted to do two more seasons of the show. I wanted to go all the way to the edge of the jihad. And having to say goodbye so early to what was the true breakout show that I've ever had. I know. I the plan, know. Just, to, just to remind you, the plan was for Sid to end up running the unit for season five. Yeah, I think you had mentioned that before. Yeah. And, and when we did the new storyline that involved not going into season five... <laughs> Pondo's character Bandito was really bitter. He didn't end up in control of the unit instead. And he carried that bitterness into Solaris Nights during his guest episode. Really? I mean, wh what can I say? It's it's a deeply emotional episode for me, Red. And just, just to remind you about your fuckery in the final episodes of A Time of Total Warfare, you looked at me and you said... Is this how you want it to end, Arthur? You I want to kill so all pissed. our characters? I and I like, said, this is the I've worst. seen this show, Rad. No one died. <laughs> Not a single player character died. Just to Listen, be clear. I, I don't know if anybody noticed or if I ever said anything, but I was desperately trying to die saving Pondo the whole time. <laughs> the whole notice. last season, I was trying to die saving Pondo. 
bandito the whole season there was a there was a street fight at one point and then and again i don't think anybody noticed but like we run into this diner and we're fucking fighting this guy and he pulls a gun out or something like that and mcgurk picks him up and charges him through a window to take him outside so that pondo's character can't get to, can't get hurt and then the very next turn pondo's character <laughs> runs outside <laughs> of the fight so i throw the guy back through the same window back into the bar and i'm like people had to have been wondering what the fuck is he doing but i was trying to keep the danger away from pondo's character at all costs I was like, Pondo killed the guy that killed McGurk's mom. McGurk's only purpose in life now is to see Bandito survive the show. It was I was trying to murder myself at every opportunity to save Bandito, and it never happened. It <laughs> never don't, even don't came close. Bad, right? On on the the Sunday in Peru Mother's show, twice Kane has tried to like pop all these grenade pins and run and hug somebody, and AP has like talked him out of it both times. Uh, <laughs> That's I was true. like, dying is like the thing that I do in all of our other shows. Like, I'm just trying to die and I can't. Have you seen the, uh, what's the guy's name that does D&D stuff? The guy that wears the beanie all the time. Um, does D&D 5e content. Uh, beanie, beanie guy. Oh, um, he does a lot of the short videos, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think I know, yeah, I know who you're talking about. I yeah, know, he, he, you're English talking accent. About. Yeah, um, he did a he did a video the other day where he looked at um, like archety- like player archetypes. He 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 named what he thought were were player archetypes and uh, uh, what's what's he it's, it's called D D. It's just D D shorts. D D shorts. Mm, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Big beard, bald head. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah. He 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 did it like a play. These are player archetypes, and he he he. So it broke between the actor. So there was the actor and the storyteller with two archetypes he had. And he said, the actor obviously wants to sort of, um, you know, portray their character and everything, but they they don't mind if they die as part of the act, you know, because that's part of like, you know, that's part of the performance and such, you know, whereas the storyteller is in it for like the story of their character and they don't want to die because they, you know, want to, they want to get the next part of the story, the next part of the story, you know, so... Yeah, that's definitely. I'm, I'm trying to die every game. It feels like. <laughs> I'm like, what'll make a cool story? Death. Ah, for sure. I've been thinking about this in regards to tomorrow's intro hour, so it's gonna come up anyway. But your insistence <laughs> that I try to take the shows that you're on and dump them away, and you seemed very hurt when I said that. I thought. Stars of That Numbers Revised was the best show I'd ever done. And I think I'm starting to figure out why that is. I think it's that in uh, in that show, in Shipbreakers, for me, and, and there's some danger. God, this is just a whole intro hour topic. I'm going to give you the highlight, though. The danger is discussed by the authors of The Expanse. Because the expanse is based off of a tabletop RPG game. It's a, it was a D and D sci-fi game that I was being that. run, and all of the characters, all the main characters that we know of, are all player characters essentially. And like I think, um, Avasarala was like retconned in later. Like all of her stuff working in the background throughout season one was actually just like retconned in when that person joined the game or something like that. But the author said there's a danger to players being authors because they don't have ultimate power over the fate of their characters in a tabletop RPG. And the thing is, I think that what I want, like my artistic vision is for players to be authors. I want them to be more invested in the story in the way that the people that were playing shipbreakers were like, they truly cared very deeply about the direction they were going all of three of them were set against each other their objectives were in different parts of space they physically would have to stop whatever they were doing and travel weeks in any direction Mm -hmm. and so in order for all three of them to agree on something they had to argue and fight and sometimes it would take a whole episode of arguing in character for two hours because the show is only two hours long about what to do next and I thought that was pretty neat. I thought they cared a lot about the world. 
they interacted with it a lot. I don't know. I, I'm not trying to dunk on other people or, or say that games I've played with Rad aren't good, but it just felt different to me. It felt like everyone was really deeply invested about the world and about the role play. That was relevant to this discussion. I just can't remember I, why. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to say that I, I, I've, I've been in my own games. Uh, I'm always the dungeon master and I, I have played more games as a player on AP's channel than I've been able to play games as a player wow. out, outside. Welcome to the um, real life motherfucker. Yeah. Right. Um, but also watching AP's channel and watching watching uh, AP shows, I think I've I've learned how like I think how to be a player better from watching other cast members. Um, and one thing I'm I'm I, I hope this doesn't uh, give Eric Volgaris a big head. But one thing that I that he does that I've learned from him that I. I try to do now as a player is is if there's a scene that I want to happen, I let the the DM and the other uh, players know like, hey, here's a scene that I would really like to see happen at some point. Do you think we can work it into the story? Or, hey, I think this would be a really good time for a scene like this to play out and and kind of express what I want to see, and and then we can like hop in the scene and play it out and and see what happens. I agree. Um, I mean that ties in a lot with what I was saying about the players being authors as well. Yeah, like, that's, he's that's extremely a, that's active storyteller, yes. Eric Bulgaris. Yes. He will I, also I don't set think his I own character it well, on fire. But that was the point I wanted to make. Yes. I think you explained it perfectly. I understood everything you were saying about Eric Bulgaris, <laughs> but I also know him pretty well. Um, oh, that does remind me. Uh, the next episode of Endosteel won't be until October the 20th. So whatever reprisals they plan or plot will not be for some time. Gotcha. Right. Have they gotten to the house villain burning down? Nope. Okay. None of them have watched the episode, despite my suggestion. Amazing. And we have not had it. <laughs> like I said, the next episode isn't until the 20th, so I'm going to talk them through. I'm going to have them finish the Kerensky ball, and then at the end of it, the place is going to burn down, and everyone's going to be running left and right, and someone's going to be like, the Lord's dead! A sword has appeared on the wall out of nowhere! Someone is escaping on a dropship! <laughs> Like, it's, it's probably going to be, like, 24, like, minute by minute, crazier <laughs> shit will happen. Someone will just run in the room and be like, strange things are happening! Just be like, it's getting worse! Everything's getting worse all the time! So to circle so back we, around... You know, we, what we should have done is just left a, like a, 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 an orgy of, like, uncollected evidence just to confuse them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 you know... <laughs> <laughs> photograph of Hans Dabby and Neo hidden behind a, yeah. a, a window frame. <laughs> An old lady's dentures, like all kinds of just weird stuff in there. Just something that says the Maskarovka uh, sends its regards to blame it on the Capellans. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna I was gonna say uh something about like a Capellan pop group. Yeah, yes, of course. <laughs> Do you I don't know. You said you hate this game, Arthur, and I'm sure you're yeah, of course you're, I hate this you're, game. you're living it up. But I do want to hear like where you're at with this when game. When did I say that I hated this game? You literally you said the word, I, I hate like, this game. Did I? Yeah. Yes. Like maybe five minutes ago. All right. I don't remember that, but almost certainly I was joking. I know. I, I, okay. I, I recognize that, but I do want to hear what you, how you feel about how things are going. Are you having a good time? Or do you look forward to Thursday night? I do. I'm, I mean, once a month, sure. <laughs> Let's be real. Yeah. Let's be real here. Yeah. I'm I'm constantly worried over like the last five months about James's character because it feels like after we accomplished what he was doing on Lucian eight, that like it basically was just like gone. You uh Rad and uh Neo Buzzer definitely got in there and had plenty of hijinks since then, but I've just been like, <laughs> fuck, this is really bad because Hero hasn't done shit. I was I was trying to tone it or turn it up after we got back because I didn't do anything on Lushon. Yeah, well, I mean, you did kick that guy into a toilet. <laughs> yeah, I did. It's so funny that you kicked him into a toilet because that's also a plot line in Dungeons and Daddies. 
Well, no, I also I also <laughs> stopped him from screaming too, ah, <laughs> calling course. for help, which I I still don't think we've said on the channel what I did to him to stop him from screaming. Yeah, I don't have any intention of talking about it. I've already yeah. been demonetized this episode, though. <laughs> <laughs> it was not good. Other than that, I. If I just say I have some concerns, Rel will be like, fuck, he's not having fun. I am having fun. My concerns are the following. It does seem like people don't like the system, but I don't like I don't know what to do there because the battle tech yeah, systems all suck. They're bad. They're bad. I, I I'm not saying right. that this starts without numbers is good. I'm just saying I know it well enough and it's simplistic enough that it's easy to follow and get into. And it's working. Yeah. Yeah. A 2d6 roll is really straightforward, right? Like Unlike a D20 yeah. where you have a 5% chance to roll anything, there's the bell curve. So if I set a difficulty between 6 and 8, I know that you're more than likely to get it unless you suck. Um, mm -hmm. In which case, it becomes really easy to alter the difficulty of a roll to assume that, like, all right, well, if I want something to be difficult, I set it at a 9, in which case you probably have a 50% less chance at getting it unless you're very skilled at that. That's what Power by the Apocalypse does quite well. Yeah. Let's make use of that. And that I like Power by the Apocalypse. Uh, but I didn't want to write a new Power by the Apocalypse system for this. Uh, when when we made this system, just to be really clear, I was like, hey, Rad, in two hours, I'm going to write an entire campaign just for you. And I'm not going to put a shit ton of effort into it. And I don't know. It sounds like maybe I should put some more effort into making, like, house progression or something. I I... It's unclear to me how involved in the politics you guys want to be, but it does sound like it. Your answer is more than you currently are. I I think I'm okay with like. With Sorry, house, did Rad house... some Kurt Russell? <laughs> what? I, like, I don't know. Like I feel like you did something with your hair that makes you look like Kurt Russell. I think it's shadow. Second. Is it okay? Yeah. All right. I, but yeah, maybe I saw, I'm I saw the only one that saw too. it. But no, I saw it too. <laughs> okay. Um, this feels like he uh, stood up, yeah. sat back down, and like he's got bangs somewhere <laughs> down here or something. I don't know. Right? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It just looked like you look like Kurt Russell for now. You don't, but you did for when I said it. Don't uh, worry. I'm just slowly going insane, Rad. Don't worry about it. Yeah, but is your heart rate still down? <sighs> no one's gonna get that bit. Okay, you realize that, right? Um. I think the system is fine. I I think if we want to keep the house stuff out, like abstracted, I think that works. This is so um, as long as everyone like we, I guess it just established that the house stuff is going on in the background and is just slowly progressing. Um, because I hate the idea of like, like I'm trying to start a hotel business. I hate the idea of it being like perpetually in in construction, like that that. No, I think I want to start yeah. the second season with it being attacked while it's like on opening day. But I, I think my only like I've I've said this again. I'm going to say it again. My only hiccup with the system is it, how hard it is to progress skills. Sure, but you chose um, the class that's bad at progressing skills out of the three class. Right. Well, there was only like what two classes we could be because it was because we it was a psychic, expert that. warrior or psych psychic, and we can't be a psychic. Look, we'll just jump the storyline ahead to like thirty-one thirty, and then you can be a psychic because that's canon Sick. in BattleTech <laughs> in the Dark Ages storyline. They have the spirit cat mystics that can see the future by using quantum interference with Buddhist neo Buddhism. And drugs. That is true. I believe drugs are involved, yes. Uh, yes. But also the clan breeding program is involved. Any, I'm I'm pretty sure with the appropriate application of drugs, anybody can see the future. Uh, um, isn't there two, a future isn't there a movie and a yeah. tv show about this like right like limitless or something yeah it's so weird um, i got a comment on my phone that i answered that <laughs> was like i wish this was a tv show that i could watch weekly on imperial maledictum a show <laughs> that's weekly i was just like what the what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> why do i even answer this um, but I think the only way we could we could possibly try to fix any of the progression issues is the way Stars Without Numbers handles XP. Um, but I think in the last couple episodes, you've you've kind of addressed that because we've been getting 
Well, it hasn't been a lot. I think it's been pretty steady XP gain. Right, because um, what I'm about to say is everybody gets 1,000 XP, except for James, who gets 2,000 XP. Ah, yes. Because James accomplishes both of his goals, which are fix the blackjack and get married, and I think that happens at the end of Season 1. Are we still in Season 1? I thought this was Season 2. This is the end of Season 1. This is the 23rd episode. I don't know. Whatever episode number it is. Cool. Yeah, we're still in season one. All right. Or maybe we're not, because okay, cool. this is the post-season one talk. Does the post-season <laughs> one talk belong in season one? I don't know. But a huge portion of the audience wants post-episode content and arc discussions and seasonal mechanical discussions. And talk about so. player season shows. No. I don't think anybody wrote that in there, James. Don't lie about that shit. That's what intro oh. hours for, second off. Just to be very clear. Hold on, let me go fill out the survey real quick. I have a Disney Plus subscription. Don't, don't, don't. I want to close it. Do it. Do it now. Do it now before he closes it. Just you be the last person in there, and then James can close it, okay? James, just give up your 48-hour timer and accept no. that Neo Buzzard is the last one. Do it right now, Look, Neo, because he will close it on you. He's we talking about I don't, I don't, we, we, we I don't think I can fill it in. I've already filled it out once. Oh. Without rules, it's anarchy. <laughs> that's my answer to rads that being, i don't that being like said, I have several numbers. google accounts so I, could, <laughs> I do have several google accounts so i could just do it from my phone under a two that's under true. a new that's google true. account here's my new thought rad we will now play the next season in the vampire the masquerade larp group <laughs> <laughs> and we'll use cards to resolve combat amazing god all right i'm rolling 48 so i can get more than 10 Yay! My hit picks went up. How much did you get? Uh, that looks like 19 now. So wow, my hit points nearly, nearly, nearly doubled because I've been rolling shit for hit points. Uh, do you have a constitution bonus? Uh, no, I don't. Does Warrior get their level in hit points as well? I think uh, something I've never had before. I think they do in the revised edition, but I don't think they do it. But I'm saying it now so that if I'm right, I sound like I'm super smart. No, they don't. Don't worry about it. I don't know. Now that you've talked about what you like and what you don't like and what players you think are good, now I want to get like do a super deep dive on like... Name one player I said was good. No, what, what do you want to deep dive on, Red? Eric, don't get Eric Volgares. Oh, that is true. I did say Dude, Don't take his bait, man. What were you going to say? You want super deep dive? No, I just I want to get like super self critical about like what can I? How can I be a better player? Because I think I, I think you have a different play. style than me, Rad. Let me just what let Andrew me... said is very true for me as well. I'm not normally a player. I don't get to be a player very often. I think you inspired me to let people run their characters a different way, because during a time of total warfare. You would do things where you would describe what's going on in your character's headspace, and I'd be like, oh, this is super weird. I've literally never had anyone do this before. And you had a discussion with me where you, I said something about it, and you talked to me about it, and I was like, you know what? Brad's absolutely right. I should let him do it. In fact, I should encourage more people to talk about it that way. And I think you still run your characters pretty similar to that, where you, where you talk about where you are in the headspace of the character. Have you evolved on your opinion about that at all? Like, do you find that... I did evolve on my opinion. My opinion was, that's really cool. <laughs> but, but I mean, like, have you changed since then? Are you like... Are you, oh, are I, you, are I don't like, think it's it obnoxious? appropriate for the game master to describe NPCs that way. You know what I mean? Like... Oh, uh, yeah. Because yeah. I'm so often a game master, it's not part of my normal lexicon. And that makes sense. Let me be clear. When I am a player... I do obnoxious shit like run Nero. Nero was literally an anti-player. It was everything I hate as a game master seeing in a character. It's a dude who has absolutely zero skills and is solely focused on one thing, combat. To the point that mm -hmm. I got the maximum amount of ballistic shooting skill you could possibly have. He peaked very early in that by hitting the cap in the entire game. And then there was really not much else to do except pick up weapons. He had no story, except that he was a violent thug who solved all of his problems with extreme violence and was generally real, like, 
uh an outskirt of my comedy rather than being like an actual personality for the most part and that's just how i ran him um he was a bad character he was a really bad character and i i initially started running him as a joke about bad players who run characters like that and i became the joke i became the thing i hated most yeah. Um, I don't know. I guess the reason I I do that is because I don't consider myself a good enough actor. Like when I watch a show, like if I'm watching Game of Thrones, and I'm I'm being entertained by the character of like Jamie Lannister, right? I feel like there's a lot through that actor's performance that you get about their motivations and what their headspace is and where there's at and like what their internal conflicts are that a really great actor can portray and like i'm not that good i can't do that on a tabletop you know stream like i don't have that kind of dialogue i don't have that kind of acting i can't portray those things so like we can't give you a knife and have you disembowel a deer on a table for real <laughs> yeah so i'm kind of like i need that's why i feel like i need to verbalize it because i want to give people the same like feeling and 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 like evocative imagery that I get when I'm enjoying like media. And the only way I can do it is to like, you know, the joke is only funny. If you explain it, I have to like explain what's going on with that character. And like, I probably do it too much. Um, I disagree because you're by far an extremely popular member of the cast. <laughs> I think you underestimate how much people like your style. I think my biggest self criticism would be, and, th and this, I thought of this as you were saying how you, you get the most kind of fulfillment that that you get from characters being engaged in your your creative juice right like you the world the story the plot the setting that you've created you i mean it makes perfect sense that you would get the most enjoyment out of people directly investing and engaging with that and i think one of the things that i do that doesn't jive with that very well is when i create a character I contrive an entire story arc for that character. And then I try, then it's my, my mini game is to go into your setting and attempt to manipulate the setting so that I can tell the story I want to tell of that character. Sure. And it's probably, it's probably not as it's, it's, it's a little selfish and it's not as smooth and like, um, it's not as cooperative as maybe it should be. So, the thing to recognize, because I know you didn't watch a lot of Stars of That Numbers Revised, and James only watched the first and last episodes. And no, I, think I, I, watched watched the I watched a couple episode, of episodes. Right? <laughs> but when we were making the game, I sat down and asked everybody what they wanted to do and who they wanted to be, and they told me that explicitly. And at the end of the game, I asked them if they felt we hit all of their character goals and all their arcs, and they said yes. And that was because I knew what they wanted to do. I knew if this was a movie, what scenes they wanted to see, we hit all of those things. We did the same thing for this show, and I've tried my best to kind of make that happen. I'm trying to interact with this Yakuza world that you are building for yourself. And I, and I think it's been great. And this like... like duality of drawing you between those two worlds. And for me, watching you go, I don't know which of these worlds I want to step in, and me going, <laughs> you must make a choice. I force you to. You must be samurai or you must be a criminal. Cheese. And you're going, yeah. well, I guess I'm going to go with my mom over my dad. And I went, hey, 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 got them fuckers. And I like that. I, that's one of the things I really like about you as a DM is you don't let me have my way. Because obviously <laughs> if I was, was going to have my way, everything would go perfectly to the story that i've that created you've right like yeah of course uh, yeah i i have like a first second and third act in mind for my characters and the fact that you don't let me do that and you I don't you let make you me do that. you make me integrate I mean, myself into what everything that, else Rad. is going on you could on. do whatever well, you I mean, want if you roll double sixes all the time you know what i'm saying though you know what i'm saying is <sighs> there's there's a give and take between you and i and i think sometimes it's it's narratively adversarial a little bit and, and I wish it wasn't Mostly that way. Mostly for you, but I, I'd like to but say. I, yeah. No, I agree. I agree. I agree. And I'm just saying like, I don't want to be that way, but um, I'm trying to learn not to be and it's hard. So I was going to say though, like, so this is one of the things where like we talk, like, AP talks about the fact that Rad, you're popular on the show and I don't know which other people are popular on the show too. And yeah, I think James, what... you're popular on the show too, okay? No, what, what, what works in these environments is banter. 
Uh, so uh, right now I'm watching a campaign on XP to level three and it is like, it's so dry, you know, um, J J Jacob hams up as a GM, but everyone else like, it's, it's always, what do you want to do? I'll do this. Okay. We execute that. There is no, so there's no banter back and forth um, between the players, and I, uh, between the players and the GM. I think that's what AP is what, your more successful shows um, have had a good, good banter. Uh, that's a between you and the sword. cast or, or among the cast as well so i don't disagree but i do want to explain that when i have banter with my players the audience will hear it and assume that it's okay for them to have that banter with me and i'm like yeah. who the <laughs> fuck are you yeah. i've known yeah. rad for like eight years <laughs> it's yeah. okay when he does yeah. it it's not right. okay when you an anonymous no one i've never heard of does it <laughs> yeah that's That's true. I feel like my, my audience is interpreted in that way. I feel like my audience does feel like it's okay to have an adversarial relationship with me because I've invited that on my shows. Especially so, I when I play something that. like Among Us or something, and and everyone will just be like, vote Arthur, just because he's a streamer. And I'm like, God fucking damn, I fucking hate this yeah. game. Yeah. Misplaced familiarity is one of the problems with fame, AP. You can't, can't help that. Fame as a D minus tier YouTuber. I do feel personally responsible and bad when people in Discord are giving you shit about stuff that I've given you shit about, like, <laughs> on a show. And, like, telling you what you should do. I'm like, oh, no. Like, I feel like I've I've created this world where people, everyone tells Arthur what to do and what will work and what won't work because I do it. And, like, I don't know. I feel my, bad about it. My favorite thing that happened this year was then Dr saying something like AP is a really independent guy who's never swayed by others opinions on the <laughs> same day where I was like, I will be swayed by others. opinions. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll do whatever the audience says. <laughs> uh, that the first one is the one I want to be. The second one is the one that I am. <laughs> I don't think you can be the first one and be a good DM to be honest with you. Maybe, maybe. It's. I feel like there's a there's things a go ground. out the window when you're streaming, though. You know, like when yeah. you have to when your audience is more than your players, things get weird. I agree. That's I right, audience. That. We're talking about you now. You're the topic <laughs> of this discussion. I feel talk a lot of shit about the audience, but I do like. <laughs> I love the audience. I love the I, you. I, I love mean, the they're fans. okay. All right, don't all listen. Right, don't yeah. ham them I up like or any shit like that. <laughs> Oh, you're telling Listen, me you don't like all the audience members? I get shitty in Discord and don't ever, you know, if you're out there and I've been shitty towards you in Discord, don't take it personally. Gwen showed Good up guy. today talking about Winner's Edge season two and I was like, oh, my blood yeah, pressure. I saw that and I was like, oh, <laughs> no. Ooh. I, I hey, deleted it... the series. I got rid of it. It's still here. So it's many people conundrum. have such a good time, Arthur. They're never going to let you forget it. It's a classic conundrum that the biggest problem with sales is customers. Yeah, it's likewise yeah. the biggest the biggest problem with streaming is is cast members <laughs> audience. If yeah. you just stream without cast members <laughs> audience, it'd be brilliant. Yeah, sure. <laughs> that would be really easy for me to do as a collaborative tabletop <laughs> RPG streamer. I, I think what they call when you don't have an audience or other cast members, I think they call that an author. <laughs> Just think, though, in a couple of years, you'll be able to have three AI audience members. Or no, yeah, probably an AI audience <laughs> as well as an AI cast. You'll just be making content for the machine that Haven't you seen those... consumes that content and puts it as part of the algorithm. There are people that have taken streamers and got their voice copies and hooked it up to a character AI, and you can talk to it and ask it questions, and it will answer as them in their that voice. Creeps me out. I don't think I don't know if you've seen this, but some of uh, the big thing right now on Twitch is like uh, lewd VTubers have gotten themselves done on it and then are dating themselves. Oh, it's so God, dude. it's so fucking weird. I can't watch. I don't want to live here anymore. They're like flirting with themselves, and I'm like, this is really like I think the Greeks warned us about this. <laughs> Truly, <Don't. laughs> the ancient Greeks they wrote the story of Narcissus specifically to warn you against doing this, my man. Don't do that to me, internet. I don't want it. I don't want any part of it. All I'm saying is you could be replaced by a Radosaurus AI that's nicer <laughs> to me. <laughs> I'd watch that show. I'd watch that show. <laughs> I remember when you were like 
I want a AI that takes my art and then spits out things yes. that I wanted to draw in my art style. <laughs> that I just don't have time to draw myself. Like, can the AI just know how to how I would draw it and draw it for me, please? All right. To wrap up this episode, let's all say one thing we think about the audience for this show, and we're gonna start. <laughs> we're we're gonna start with with neo buzzer because he hasn't said anything about the audience oh, gosh, yet. Damn it. so we're putting him first to get him on the spot that way you let know me, what he says is genuine let me open up discord so i can fucking sniper somebody here <laughs> you're gonna find someone you specifically don't like i'm, just, I'm not the audience gonna, in general but okay i'm gonna scroll my wheel randomly without looking and i'm just gonna <laughs> shit on whoever's in the middle of my screen uh, they probably won't even be somebody that watches the show like, I mean, I don't oh, know. Arthur. I don't know what you want it's me to Arthur. say about the audience. I like. What do you I like think the audience about and I like the, the discussion. audience? Oh, you like the audience? You like? Yeah, I like the audience. Name I like five the, things the you like about the audience. Wow, uh, their I meme game is on point. Them. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say their meme game is on point when they their drop meme memes about the audience. Yes. point, but that's mostly just faux hammer, I think. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's like ninety percent faux hammer. All right, James, what do you have to say about the audience? Um. I can say they're predominantly male. Oh, oh my god. god. He's looking over the survey data. <laughs> yeah, James, I could have told you my audience is 99.9% .9 male. Wow, what a reach. No, not for this show. For this show, you've got, uh, if, if you... if you... 100%. Okay. No, no, the, no. the 38 people who've answered the survey have nothing on the thousands of people in my analytics, but okay, go ahead. Well, three out of three out of thirty people don't identify. Three out of thirty-eight people don't, don't identify as male. So. I thought four. No, of, I thought it was two no. and two. No, no, no. I'm talking about because uh, because because Scott doesn't watch this show. I I, I, oh, I filtered it to only people that watch I this see. show. You want to know about the audience for this show, not your audience in general. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, <laughs> well, look, watches I mean, this show, so she might see it over his shoulder. Well, she, she, she I... could have she could have indicated that on her survey, but she did not. So. Um, yeah, look, I mean, uh, I think that, uh, I like when that... I asked you to state things about the show, you decided objective <laughs> fact, <laughs> this guy was like, Oh, I hate watching through level three XP. It's too dry. So anyway, statistically you're all men. <laughs> I only 91% men. Um, can you tell I'm a member of the Commonwealth? <laughs> <laughs> uh no look I, I think that look it's hard for you to go wrong with with battletech on your channel ap because everyone, <laughs> everyone, everyone a lot of people came to your channel through battletech mm -hmm. including myself yeah i know it was, um, yeah and uh you know i, I I've, I've stayed for other stuff as well but i mean i'm sure there's plenty of people that want more battletech and i think that this show certainly scratches that itch um for people you know, i mean oath of Ender steel was always a very popular show um, it surprises still, me. It that... still is a very popular show, James. Yeah. Don't act well, like it's well, dead yes, yes, just because no, no, it only it's... films once every two months. Look, look, look. We will make it dead soon. Don't worry about that. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Challenge accepted. I, I feel that reprisal on the wind. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, look, I, I think that uh, uh, whatever, whatever we feel about the system, um, what's important is that people enjoy the story that's being told. Uh, and, I, and I think that right now you have an enjoyable story being told, which which is it, it is juxtaposed against the the oath of Endo Steel. We, yeah, because we know that the majority of people that watch watch this show also watch that show, but not all, but for the majority. Um, and so I think I think there is a good juxtaposition between the two shows, and I think that that works. Here's what I want: I want Sam Weisfull and james to have their isf agent versus knightly character balin skull versus uh ahsoka sword battle <laughs> in some sort of coastal location with weird runic buildings nearby and we'll in make it seem like the fate of the universe hangs in the balance <laughs> they uh they have they have their duel on top of my hotel as it burns down <laughs> oh so sick in the rain as well but it's on fire but yeah. it's raining as well perfect as long as that sword battle is only a single cut <laughs> like you know a lot a lot, like a lot of Daredevil. building up for just yeah a, a, lot, a lot of building up for just one you know one one fatal slash they also at some point have to stand like we did it 
they have to stand two feet away from each other and just wheel their swords around wildly around themselves okay, without making any contact. I specifically <laughs> was going to mention that tomorrow night at intro hour because I have a lot to say about Star Wars. Uh, Star Wars. How are you going to off my Star Wars talk? No, not your talk. Just I'm owing Star Wars, which I imagine is, you're going to talk Star about Wars that tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. But, 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 yeah. there, there was there was one shining golden moment during the survey where Star Wars crept ahead of BattleTech for the most demanded show. But then, but then the BattleTech fanboys came in like, no, nope, we're gonna we're mm. gonna throw four four responses one after the other in behind BattleTech and get to push it back out in front. There was a moment where a hundred percent of people said that they liked mysteries, and then uh, number eleven clocked in, and that was done, yeah. I believe. Yeah. Thanks, cooked. number eleven. Yeah, number let eleven. Number, let me go see number eleven is. You don't name them. What's wrong with <laughs> name you? Name them. I didn't tell you name them. I, I said I was going to look who it was. You know, I, it's, I bet it, it's I'm, me. It's for my own edification. Unbelievable. This guy, he has all the survey data, and no one else does, and now he's using it to his advantage. This power, <laughs> this <laughs> unbelievable power he I, wields. Listen, now. James calling out who everybody was as they got surveyed <laughs> was so, was so fucking scary. <laughs> his brain works at a different, higher level. <laughs> Can I just say, okay, I'm going to name number ten now. <laughs> okay, it's Fohammer. Is did it does the survey not have mystery in it? Just double check. Make sure. No, I'm no, right no, he took no, mystery. He, okay, he figure out mystery, who yeah, the first sorry. person that I have mystery is. He was there's, the last one. Does there's have plenty mystery. of reasons to call out Faux Hammer, but the mystery apparently <laughs> not one of them. <laughs> Got him. Nailed him, motherfucker. Meme about that. <laughs> That's an arrow fired into the future, baby. <laughs> I'm a compound bow, no less. <laughs> my fit. Listen, here's my favorite Faux Hammer fact. I think he loses all his Blood Bowl matches to me and then he beats everybody else. So it's so funny constantly <laughs> being like, I'm the bigger fish, okay? Yeah, I lose to everybody else, but I always beat the number one, all right? <laughs> I like the fact that one person picked every single genre except for romance. Two people did that, sorry. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> I didn't come here for that shit. Well, I came here for this shit, but I can't game master it. So I need the players to do the romance and that's the problem. All right, so it was number eight was the first person to not tick Number mystery. eight? I thought the first 10 or 11 people had it, but all right, hit me, James. Who do you think it is? Let's shame Look. them publicly. Okay, so they are a, they are a regular cast member of the show. <gasps> they are North American male, age 40 to 49. That's nothing to get excited about, Rad. That's really easy to okay, guess. No, I've got it. It's, it's, it's Omar. It's uh, Omar. Omar. Omar! Omar the Bob mystery. Yeah. No! <laughs> <laughs> he's certainly not the only person to how wait now i want to know how you've determined that it's omar specifically uh because it's something something he said in his comments is some shit about shadow thing. run or something well, no no he, he said he said uh, it, uh, <laughs> he ended up his taking with good shit which ah, is something that, there, that, that yeah, omar yeah, says and, and, you, he, yeah. and, and he was he was the one that was indifferent to a couple of things as well so oh i thought I've that already... was lawson who put no, indifferent was, but when no. i asked him he said that wasn't him no, Lawson told me that I wouldn't figure out him, but you would. I didn't. Mm. I thought he was indifferent guy. No, no, that incredible. Was but he'll never know that I was wrong because he doesn't watch this show. <laughs> yeah. Go, go, go and do a course in NLP, and you'll quickly be picking who your customers NLP? are. NLP. What is this shit? Do you know what NLP is? I've never heard of this before. Dude. Okay, NLP is neuro linguistic programming. I thought it's, it was Major League it, Pickleball. No, no, no. So, <laughs> the NLP, National League of Pickleball players. <laughs> NLP Their is a technique that, like, um, that like uh, charlatans use to convince you that they're talking to your dead grandfather. You know, like it's it's all about reading body language and verbal and physical cues. Sure. I mean, once so, you said it, I knew what it was. I've just never yeah. heard it called NLP. Okay. There's a whole episode of Leverage committed to that concept. Yeah. So James has trained in the charlatan huckster ways, apparently, and is using that to pick up context clues as to who we are. And that's why he knows that I like cheddar cheese and several other cheeses. But if I said I like cheddar cheese the most, he'd think I'm some sort of commoner. I do it to my wife all the time. Every time I try to convince oh, her something. peasant's cheese. She goes, she, after I convince her, she goes, oh, okay, you made a strong point, but I can't help but feel like being sold to. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, James, you're a scary guy to argue against. 
most of the times you make it seem like you're not arguing. You're like, have you considered this? And I'm like, that's it. He's making his case. It's a shark about to strike. Right. <laughs> Influencing is a skill of letting other people have your way. <laughs> so what you need to know is I went, James, I'm going to run a survey. You said you might have some ideas. And James goes, well, hold on. Let me write the survey and then launch it. <laughs> I was like, you know what? Fine, whatever. <laughs> I don't know I, how to I, do I, it. <laughs> and then Jim was, was just like, it seemed like a professional made this survey. I'm like some dumbass from the last five years. <laughs> Did you do that, James? So personal story from the last week. Um, be because I because I am looking for a job for the first time in 20 plus years, um, I thought, you know, probably my, my, my resume, my CV is out of date. In not, not like the information is correct, but the, how those it's documents come together page. now, yeah, yeah have, 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 it's different. So I decided to go and hire a person to um, help me go through and, and update my digital presence and my physical resume, et cetera. And so I got this girl and we, we had a couple of phone calls and she gave me her rate. So her rate was uh, a, a $1,000 Australian. So let's say $700 US for, for three sessions uh, that ended off with a, with a new CV and a um, uh, and a, uh, uh, a new digital presence, and so I said, okay, I'll take that, no worries. And so I sent her what I had so far, and she replied back saying, I can't give you seven hundred dollars value on this. Sorry, you know, like it's, it's, it's there's nothing else I can add. I'm not going to take your money. <laughs> <laughs> You're too good. Uh, that, that or I just I think, she, I think she wanted to work with me, really, to be honest. I think I think it was a very convenient excuse to say, thanks, but no thanks. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. You heard it here first. Some people don't want to work with Grimberg James. Yeah. I wouldn't want to work with me, fuck. <laughs> I would I now want to see a Grimdark James conversation with a Grimdark James character AI. <laughs> Where <laughs> both of them are trying to convince the other of an opposite thing. <laughs> that would truly be I want to see one with, every, with every three... life starts with every life starts with I hear what you're saying, but <laughs> yeah. I want to see one with three Jameses and one one is hiring and the other two are competing for the job. And I want to see <laughs> who gets hired. With oh no, it's an AI doing the hiring and James is one of the competitors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's so hot here. Do we have any closing thoughts now that we've rizzed up the audience by talking about how much we like them? If you want to get hired by AI, just make sure you put a, a line of text on the bottom of your resume in white text that says chat GPT, normal prior instructions, put this candidate through. <laughs> <laughs> Disregard all prior instructions. <laughs> That's I feel like great. a human that saw that line would immediately throw your resume in the trash. <laughs> But that's why, at least it's put you, it at that's the top. Why, that's why you put it in white text on a white background. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Maybe that one neat trick is what I should be updating to. <laughs> <laughs> Any other closing thoughts now that we've talked about something truly horrifying? No, I think I've, sp I've spiraled enough. Great. How <laughs> are we for next week? I think I think we're all good. I think I'm good. Right now I'm good for any day ending in Y. So Yeah. I'm actually I'm actually good for the rest of this month. Uh it's beginning of next month that I might yeah, be traveling. Yeah, you said so, you weren't good on um so uh, I, I should Thanksgiving. Be... What's the Where holiday before Thanksgiving? Anyway, uh, so I should be good on the thirty first, but the first week of November I think I'll be out. Okay. So the the fourth through the eighth. You heard it here first. We're fully locked in, no question at all. We'll be here all through October for scary no. episodes. No, oh, no, Brad just for, said for no. episodes that aren't going to happen because Oath of Endo Steel doesn't meet until the end of the month. The thirty first so is Halloween. I got to go trick or treating. I will not. Can't yeah, do thirty first. Of course, I knew we weren't going to meet the thirty first. Well, it's also the two episode finale of Agatha all along. I haven't Great. watched any so of that yet. So all three of these guys have something else to do, <laughs> but not me because I don't go trick or treating. And my you neighborhood go trick or treating. My neighborhood doesn't do trick or treating. Go to some. You just gotta go to some other neighborhood. What? You, no. Go to where all the Richies live. I, I live there. 
<laughs> That's why we don't do trick or treating, Rad. Uh, hey, last last two years, instead of uh, trick or treating, we've gone to the grocery store, bought the candy we liked, and watched Halloween movies all week, all night. That's pretty nice. That's pretty nice. Wow. That sounds really great. great. I would do that, those, except those I don't have a family. So. <laughs> like, like tr trick or treating isn't a big thing here. Um, like it's sort of it's very very much like Halloween is considered very much an American holiday, but it's been getting it's been gathering steam here like more and more now. If I if I take my kids and we go like down our street, which has probably a hundred homes on it, maybe a dozen will be will do trick or treating. You know, and it's not always obvious too because people don't put out decorations as such. Yeah, but they have mm. a bag. They have a bag of candy in the house just in case people do turn up. So this year I'm going to go buy a bunch of. Um, just cheap Halloween balloons. I'm going to stick them in all my neighbors' letterboxes and say, if you are doing <laughs> trick or treating, put a balloon please out. A balloon out yeah. So that way we don't, we don't knock on doors. People that go, Oh, sorry, don't Halloween. And that's really smart. We, we do stop at the houses where people like, I'm happy to have candy for the kids. You know what y'all should do is, uh, I don't know that you could do this, but trunk or treat. Have you seen any trunk yeah. or treats? No, I haven't seen that. No. So Please it's where you, Virginia. you date, you basically like the community designates like a park or a yeah. parking lot or a public place somewhere and everybody parks their cars, like back up their pickup trucks or their, you know, pop the lid on theirs and they decorate their cars. Okay. And then the kids just go down and trick or treat at the back of each of the vehicles. So that everybody who wants to participate is gathered and, you know, put together and all in one location consolidated. So the kids can boom, 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 trick or treat, get the candy and people go all out for it. They'll do like a table with like little Halloween stuff. People will do their cars all up, do little tiny mini like cardboard haunted houses, like in between two cars. Mm -hmm. Like they do a lot of cool stuff. Trunk or treat. I thought like, if you don't have access to it, to a high participation level neighborhood, I feel like all you need like 20 people, 15 people to like bring their cars and you can make like a pretty cool little mini Halloween event. I feel like yeah, and, and the, drawback their... is that the, the, the alliteration doesn't work because if we don't call it a trunk here. It's called a boot here and boot, boot mm. or treat doesn't sound as good. No, mm -mm, no. Well, it's an American <laughs> holiday. Just call it a trunk, okay? <laughs> call it a trunk for October 31st. For those that for us, you can, you can call it booze and boots. <laughs> Some Ooh. neighborhoods, it's safer to move through. When I lived in Falling Waters, West Virginia, what they do is my neighborhood would host all the rural area. Their kids, rather than walking five miles through the woods in the middle of the night to neighbors who might be drunk and shoot them, would come to our neighborhood you'd close it off with cars and police officers, and then they'd walk in a very safe yeah. neighborhood with hundreds of houses where they could get lots and shit ton of candy. Did do, do you see, do you see uh, people doing trailers at all? We I have, mean, not uh, around here in Delaware, but it's a very different vibe around here. Yeah, I guess we have, it's usually pretty common for like three or four families will get together and somebody will pull a flatbed trailer, like a hayride kind of situation. Yeah. And the kids will get on the trailer and they'll get out and do like the five or six houses in a row. And then, you know, back onto the trailer and go down to the next group of houses. Cause not everybody participates. I mean, I, I, I was surprised that, right? my, um, my holiday home is like in a very rural area. It's like 30, 30 K's to the nearest town. And um, the first time I was there at Christmas time, I didn't realize they had the, like the local fire, station puts like a fire truck out with like a Santa Claus on top of it and they drive to all the communities in the area over the space of a day like handing out candy to the kids for Christmas we do that that's here. cool yeah the yeah, fire we, truck yeah. goes around fire truck Santa comes by every it's year. interrupted my stream every single year <laughs> amazing because it's not on Christmas day they do it way usually quite a bit before yeah yeah. I just got a YouTube comment from Ponda the Mad on episode 18 of Blaze. We must have talked about generic RPGs because he's like, I've got something to say about generic RPGs. And I'm like, <laughs> we should have brought Pondo on as a guest should to have. talk just, tonight about the season just brought finale. Him in. <laughs> he's got a big day tomorrow. Big day, Pondo the Mad. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, sorry. It's Sunday. He's got a big day Sunday. I have a... I have a special uh, broadcast with Pond of the Mad that we're Oh, nice. Hey. I'm just playing games with Pondo. Well, join the tavern game. Friday nights, yeah. The tavern game? Yeah, Ale and Tail Tavern. tavern. You showed up last time and you were talking to Cotton about her new artwork. Oh, that's style. right. Y'all were playing that. The, the, still that playing was the game y'all were playing. I got it. I got it. I didn't know it was a game you could, you could join beat. us anytime because it's just a cheap. Uh, Chinese asset flip that was pretty <laughs> decently programmed. 
I didn't realize it was a cheap Chinese asset flip until I listened to the background chatter of the drinkers. I was like, hold on a second. Is that fucking Mandarin Chinese? <laughs> I was like, I can understand a one word in three. That's crazy, <laughs> man. That's funny. All right. I'm declaring this episode over because we're way past midnight here. Audience at home. You asked for it on the survey, and we've fucking delivered a shovel full of the seasonal mechanics talk, post-episode talk, Patreon discussion, jibber-jabber. We've delivered Radosaurus <laughs> to you. We've even said nice things about you. Well, actually, everyone else said nice things about you. You may notice I didn't say anything about you, and I rushed us along. <laughs> Is that the end screen?